Hello everyone, my name is Chris Edwards and today I'm going to discuss fractional calculus and fractional differential equations. Specifically, I'm going to discuss uh, what fractional calculus is, necessary functions for fractional calculus, the history of fractional calculus from 1695 to the present, uh, definitions of fractional derivatives and fractional integrals, uh, basic examples uh, for fractional calculus, and rules for fractional derivatives and, and, and integrals. So what is fractional calculus exactly? In standard calculus, one finds derivatives and integrals of integer order. Fractional calculus involves differentiation and integration of arbitrary order, including all real numbers and even complex values. Necessary function, uh, the first necessary function for fractional calculus is the gamma function. It plays a big role in fractional calculus. This is evident as the gamma function appears in the definitions of fractional derivatives and fractional integrals. The gamma function was invented by Euler to extend the factorial to complex and real number arguments. Uh, the gamma function is defined as uh, the integral from zero to infinity, uh, t to the z minus one, e to the negative t dt. This integral converges when the real part of z is positive. A useful property of the gamma function is uh, gamma of one plus z is equal to z times the gamma function of z. When z is a positive integer, the gamma function of z is equal to z minus one factorial. Another important function is the metag leffler function. The metag leffler function is a generalization of the, of the exponential function. This function can be seen uh, in the graph to the right. Uh, the graph shows the metag leffler function of x with different alpha parameters. When alpha equals one, uh, which is the blue line in the graph, uh, the metag leffler function is equal to the exponential function. The metag leffler function is important for fractional calculus uh, because it appears in the solution of fractional differential equations. Uh, because the metag leffler function is a generalization of the exponential function, which arises in the solution of integer order differential equations, it makes sense that the metag leffler function would arise in the solution of fractional order differential equations. The one parameter metag leffler function is defined as uh, the summation of z to the k divided by the gamma function of alpha k plus one uh, for alpha greater than zero. The two parameter uh, metag leffler function is similarly defined uh, at the bottom of the slide. Uh, the metag leffler function is denoted e sub alpha and uh, for the one parameter uh, metag lever function and E sub alpha beta for the two parameter one. Fractional calculus began from a question posed by Lopital uh, to Leibniz. To Leibniz. Uh, Lopital asked for the nth, for the nth derivative uh, dnx. Uh, yeah. For the nth derivative, what is the result if n is equal to one half? Uh, this is commonly viewed as the beginning of the subject of fractional calculus. Euler uh, invented the gamma function, uh, which was essential for the development of fractional calculus in 1729. Uh, Lacroix in 1819 produced less than two pages of work on uh, the, the derivative of arbitrary order, but he developed uh, the derivative of arbitrary order for uh, monomials in this little work. He did this by extending the formula for the nth derivative, replacing the factorials with the gamma function. Uh, the formula for the derivative of arbitrary order for monomials is given at the bottom of the slide. Lacroix also correctly calculated the half derivative of x using this formula. In 1822, Fourier found the formulas for the arbitrary derivative of the sine and cosine functions. Uh, one can derive these formulas by finding the formulas for the nth order derivative of the sine and cosine functions and then extending them to the arbitrary order alpha. These functions are given are also uh, 
these formulas are, are given at the bottom of the slide. And the next contributor to the development of fractional calculus was Abel. Abel provided the first application for fractional calculus with this uh, Tautokron problem in 1823. The Tautokron problem involves finding a curve in which the time taken uh, to reach the bottom is independent of the starting position, assuming no friction and constant gravity. So two point masses travel down such a curve, with one starting near the top and the other starting near the bottom at the same time t. The two point masses will reach the bottom at the same time. Another major contributor uh, to the development of fractional calcul calculus was uh, Louisville, who was the first to study fractional calculus in depth. In 1832, Louisville found the arbitrary derivative of the exponential function in a similar manner, man uh, manner to Helicroy and Fourier found their formulas for the arbitrary derivative. Louisville found the nth derivative for the exponential function and extended it to the arbitrary order uh, alpha. Louisville also found the arbitrary derivative for x to the negative p. Uh, Ryman also contributed greatly to the development of fractional calculus. Ryman uh, researched fra fractional calculus while he was a student and his work was not published uh, until after his death. Ryman developed the definition for the fractional integral, and his definition is very similar to the modern uh, definition of the Ryman Louisville fractional derivative. Grunwald and Letnikov were the next uh, major people to contribute to the development of fractional calculus with the invention of the Grunwald Letnikov fractional derivative. Uh, this started from Grunewald's attempt to find a less restrictive definition for the fractional derivative in 1867. He started by using the definition of the derivative as a limit of a difference quotient. Letnikov finished the proof uh, for the derivative in 1868. Uh, the Grunewald Letnikov fractional derivative, uh, defined at the bottom of the slide, is mainly used for the numerical approximation of fractional derivatives. In the 1890s, Heaviside developed his operational calculus to solve uh, specific problems in the theory of electromagnetism, and it was useful for electrical engineers. Heaviside's operational calculus was an important step in the development of applications for fractional derivatives. Tag leffler invented and studied the Tag leffler function in a series of papers from 1899 to 1904. In the 20th century, Hardy and Littlewood uh, studied the properties of fractional integrals. A major development in fractional calculus took place in 1967 when Caputo invented the Caputo fractional derivative. Caputo reformulated the Ryman and Louisville fractional derivative so he could use standard, uh, that is, integer order, initial conditions, when working with fractional differential equations, rather than the non integer order initial conditions required when using the Ryman Louisville fractional derivative uh, for uh, fractional differential equations. Because of this, the Caputo fractional derivative is used frequently in the, in the application of fractional calculus. The first international conference on fractional calculus took place in 1974 at the University of New Haven. Uh, the first book on the subject of fractional calculus was also published in 1974. Since these events, fractional calculus has developed uh, much faster. In the 1990s, more uh, books were published, and the mathematical journal Fractional Calculus and Applied Analysis was created. Uh, this journal is strictly uh, is so, uh, solely focuses on the theory and application of fractional calculus. Uh, numerous applications were also developed for fractional calculus uh, since. Uh, 1974. These applications include diffusion, uh, fractional oscillators, signal processing, wave motion, and uh, viscoelasticity. All right. The Ryman and Louisville fractional integral of order alpha of a function uh, f of x is defined as 1 over the gamma function of alpha uh, times the integral from 0 to x. Uh, of x minus s, the alpha minus 1, f of s, ds, and is denoted by uh, j alpha. 
the Riemann allele of fractional der fractional derivative is then defined so that so that the fractional derivative of the fractional integral of a function f of x is equal to the function f of x. This is similar to the fundamental theorem of calculus uh, from standard calculus. The Riemann allele the Riemann allele fractional derivative is defined as one over the gamma function of n minus alpha uh, dn dx to the n uh, times the integral from 0 uh, to x of x minus s to the n minus alpha minus 1 uh, times f of s ds uh, with n minus 1 less than, less than alpha less than n. The Riemann allele fractional derivative is hard to apply uh, to real world problems. This is why the Caputo fractional derivative was invented. The Caputo fractional derivative is defined as 1 over the gamma function of n minus alpha times the integral from 0 to x of x minus s to the n minus alpha minus 1 fn of s ds with n uh, minus 1 less than alpha less than n or fn of s is the nth derivative of f of f yeah. For example if 0 is less than alpha less than 1, then we get the formula on the slide and uh, at the bottom of the slide and fn of s becomes f prime of s because n would be 1 in that case. Uh, the difference between the Riemann allele fractional derivative and the Caputo fractional derivative is the order one takes to arrive at the derivative of order alpha. For example, consider the three halves derivative of a function f of x. There are two ways to reach the three halves derivative. The first way is by integrating by order one half and then differentiating by order two. This method uh, is the Riemann Louisville definition. The second way is by differentiating by order two and then integrating by order one half. This method is the Caputo fractional derivative. All right, now we're going to look at some examples of fractional calculus. Uh, the first example is to find the half derivative of a constant by using the Riemann allele fractional derivative. Using our formula, we get 1 over the gamma function of 1 half uh, d dx uh, times the integral. Or, uh, all right, yeah, start over. 1 over the gamma function of 1 half uh, times the derivative of the integral from 0 to x uh, of x minus s to the negative 1 half times c ds. Evaluating the integral, we get uh, 2c times x to the 1 half. After differentiating, we get c over and, uh, and also evaluating the gamma function. We get c over the square root of pi uh, times x to the negative 1 half. In the second example, we find uh, the half derivative of a constant by using the Caputo fractional derivative uh, to demonstrate the difference between the two definitions. Uh, from our formula, uh, we get f prime of c inside the integral, so uh, the derivative of a constant is 0. Uh, so our integral becomes 0. And 0 times 1 over the gamma function of 1 half is 0. So the half derivative of a constant using the Caputo fractional derivative is equal to zero. For the next example, we find the half derivative of x squared using uh, the formula for the arbitrary derivative of a monomial. From the formula, we get uh, uh, the gamma function of three over the gamma function of five halves uh, times x to the three halves. Uh, and this is equal to 8 over uh, 3 square root pi, uh, x to the 3 halves. Uh, next, uh, we're looking at, at an example of a fractional differential equation. Uh, consider uh, d alpha x equals uh, b x of t plus f of t, uh, where x of 0 equals 0, and 0 is less than alpha is less than 1. Uh, using a Caputo-type differentiation, the solution is given by uh, 
the, equa the very long equation in the slide. Uh, as you can see, this answer involves uh, or includes the two parameter, the tag Leffler function, which, re which we introduced earlier. Next, we will discuss uh, the transfer of rules from standard calculus to fractional calculus. Rules for, in for integer order derivatives and integrals do not necessarily hold for derivatives and integrals of arbitrary order. This can be shown quite easily by testing the product rule from standard calculus. Consider d alpha uh, e to the uh, k1x times uh, e to the k2x. Uh, this is uh, obviously equal to uh, d alpha e to the k1 plus k2x. Using uh, Louisville's definition for the fractional derivative of the exponential function, we get k1 plus k2 to the alpha times e to the k1 plus k2x. If we evaluate the same derivative as a product of two exponential uh, functions, we get uh, k1 to the alpha plus k2 to the alpha uh, times e to the k1 plus k2x, which is different from our first answer, uh, which uh, the and the first one is correct. Therefore, the product rule for standard calculus does not hold for fractional calculus, uh, but an extension of the product rule can be derived uh, for fractional calculus. In general, it is dangerous to assume that rules from standard calculus hold for fractional calculus. In conclusion, fractional calculus is an interesting branch of mathematics that allows us to find derivatives and integrals of arbitrary order. As we just saw, rules for derivatives and integrals from standard calculus do not necessarily hold for uh, fractional calculus. We also covered uh, and learned about uh, classical examples uh, of, of fractional calculus. Uh, fractional calculus uh, developed slowly at first but developed a solid foundation in the 1800s because of the contributions of Louisville, Ryman, uh, Grunewald, Letnikov, and Heaviside, as well as many others. The development of fractional calculus continued into the 1900s with the invention of the Caputo fractional derivative and the development of applications for fractional calculus. Fractional calculus has grown rapidly in recent decades, uh, becoming a field of study that offers many opportunities for research and physical application. This concludes my presentation. If anyone has any questions or comments, uh, you can post them in the comments section below.